I have three words for you. Bleed your intercooler. ATSVs, CTS V-Sports, and XTS V-Sports all have a very similar engine, the LF4 or LF3 engine, and they both have water to air intercooling systems. And if there's any bubbles in that system, it could be robbing you of precious horsepower. The ATS V crowd is catching on, but the V-Sport owners need to check into their system as well to ensure that you're getting all you can out of your car. I'm gonna tell you how the intercooling system works and how to bleed and fill it in this episode up next. One of the best ways to make sure your engine is getting the most horsepower possible is to ensure it's breathing cool air. Those turbochargers put out some really hot air and we have a water to air intercooling system to help bring those temperatures down to something more digestible for the engine. But if it's not working like it should, the engine is ingesting hot air and it will reduce timing, it may reduce boost or throttle even when your foot is pinned to the floor and that's gonna rob you of that precious horsepower. Now some ATSV owners have found that their systems are not filled properly from the factory. A couple people even said they were pretty much empty. And that's scary because without intercooling, the car does have a high risk for engine damage in the wrong situation. This intercooling system is different from the engine cooling system. So you need to understand they're separate systems that need to be handled separately. Generally, the dealer would use a pressurized machine to do this, but you can do it at home with some very simple tools. And the procedure is, fairly straightforward, it just takes a little bit of patience. Thankfully, Tap Out Tuning has this all-in-one kit with everything you need to do the bleed procedure. Now, you could source these parts out separately and maybe even get it all cheaper, but I really love that Tap Out Tuning sends it all to you. You don't have to go searching and maybe get the wrong part in the mail. Plus, he includes a really awesome switch to operate the intercooler while the car is off. Now, I am gonna show you how to properly bleed the system with this kit, however, Anytime you work on your car, you should have knowledge of the system so you can make better decisions in the process. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to help you understand how the intercooling system works on the LF4 and LF3, but if you feel completely confident that you know about the intercooling system, feel free to skip to this time to get to the procedure. When your engine is running, the air is taken in from the air box and split down the two intake tubes into the turbos. The turbos compress the air to increase the boost and that air is naturally increased in temperature because it has been compressed. That hot air is fed into the intake manifold where it's then sucked into the throttle body and then into the engine for combustion. But before it goes into the throttle body, the air actually passes through two little heat exchangers. They're like little radiators or intercooler cores. These cores have coolant flowing through channels through them, so as the hot air passes by the channels, the coolant readily absorbs all that heat from the air, and then the air is cooled before it enters the throttle body to make maximum horsepower. The coolant, which is now much hotter than it was, is cycled out of the intake manifold by a pump powered by electricity and controlled by the car's engine control module. Coolant flows out of that pump down to a front mount radiator. Just like any radiator, cool ambient air is flowing through it. This radiator is mounted ahead of the V-Sport's regular engine radiator. Remember, these are two separate systems. The ambient air flowing through is cooling the coolant inside that radiator, and then it flows back to the intake manifold to start the cycle all over again. Now the V-Sport has these two auxiliary coolers on the sides, but from what I can tell, they are there to support the main engine's coolant. Remember, separate system. The XTS V-Sport doesn't even have these. The ATSV, however, has the coolant flow through a front mount intercooler, but that coolant also splits off two similar side auxiliary coolers. And this leads me to believe that probably the ATSV has better intercooling capabilities. But if there are bubbles in there, it will inhibit the heat transfer that goes on because air doesn't take on the heat as well as the coolant does. Now there are many places in the system where bubbles can build up and hang out, and that's why this bleeding process can take some time. If there are any really large bubbles or there's not enough coolant, the pump could stop running and maybe even cavitate, making the whole system not work at all. For the intercooler system, we are using 50-50 Dexcool coolant to prevent the liquid from boiling because it has a higher boiling point than water. The coolant will also not freeze as soon as water does, so your system can still operate in cold temperatures. All right, now that you know how the system works, let's get on to the fill and bleed procedure. <laughs> 
Warning, this procedure involves using coolant, and coolant is poisonous to animals. Even if you don't have pets, you never know when there's a stray dog or a cat on the prowl that may try to lick up the coolant because it does taste good to them. Be sure to clean up and rinse all spilled coolant. Don't leave any open containers of coolant lying around. My family has been affected by this, and believe me, you don't want to see your pets die due to this. The Tap Out Intercooling Bleed Kit has pretty much everything you need besides a few hand tools you probably already have in your garage. The most important parts of this are the funnel, a dowel, some hoses and couplers and clamps, as well as a switch and a special fuse and fuse adapter for the switch. Included with the kit are some instructions with colored pictures to help you through the process. I also thought it was nice that Tap Out sent a little bottle of Boostane as a gift. If you intend to install the entirety of the kit, you'll need all these tools, but otherwise, only a few of them are required. This is a 7mm wrench for the bleeder screws, a T30 Torx to remove the engine cover, at least on the V-Sport, a flathead screwdriver for hose clamps, needle nose pliers to help you get the fuse out, some diagonal wire cutters, but I recommend a razor blade, some channel locks or wide grip pliers, or even better, some hose clamp pliers, a heat gun or hair dryer, and a step drill bit like this with a 13 16 or approximately 0.8 inch size, and of course the drill to drive it. To refill the intercooler, you'll need some Dex Cool compatible coolant. This is 50-50 pre-diluted, but if you get the 100%, be sure to cut it with distilled water. Lastly, for cleanup crew, make sure you have some paper towels, rags, and a bucket. Here's your 20 second overview. First, we'll raise the car slightly, install a switch to control the intercooler pump, extend the intercooler hose a bit with this clear hose, and then we'll bleed the system using the funnel and a dowel. We'll repeat as necessary until it's done. To help bleed the system, you want the car raised slightly in the front, so I put it on some small ramps or you can park on a sloped driveway. First, you'll need to remove your engine cover using the T30 Torx and remove the oil filter cap. Be sure to put the cap back on once the cover's off. This is the CTS V Sports intercooler. The ATSV has some vacuum boxes on top, but rest assured they are the same unit. The first step is to install a switch to be able to run the intercooler pump. You can do this temporarily or do it for a permanent install like I'm going to where I mount the switch on the fuse box lid. Start by grabbing the fuse box lid closer to the strut and lift it up and then the lid comes off by unsnapping it from the other end. For permanent installation of the switch, you'll need to use a step drill bit around 13 16 of an inch or about 0.8 inches. Drill a hole in the corner of the fuse box lid, but be sure to do it in the right spot. This is actually the wrong spot. I'll show you later how I got it right, but it should be the corner closest to the coolant reservoir. The switch is nice. It's got a little rubber seal to make things watertight. Next, we need to wire the switch to the fuse box. Find the fuse that says cool pump, 10 amp, not the relay one. This is number 51 on the V-Sport, but number 53 on the ATS-V. Not sure where it is on the XTS V-Sport. But here it is on the V-Sport's block, and it is a little 10 amp fuse. We're gonna pull that out using some needle nose pliers. Replace the fuse with the one in the kit and use the brass fuse tap attached to the side of the fuse. They go in sandwiched together in the fuse receptacle. It'll stick out just like this and it'll be easy to attach the switch. Now over here on your positive battery terminal box, you wanna remove the cover. There's a little switch here, just press on that and lift the cover. It's in there a little tight on the V-Sport so it'll take some wiggling to get it out. We're going to attach the black wire of the fuse to this negative or ground post attached to the frame of the car. Now I'm just gonna install it before running the switch through the cover because I wanna make sure that it works first. Just use a 13 millimeter wrench of some type and unscrew this. Then take the black wire and put it over the terminal. Then screw the grounding terminal back in place. Next, use an eight millimeter wrench of some sort to remove this nut on the positive terminal bracket. Put the red wire of the switch over this terminal and then tighten the nut back on top of it. 
Lastly, attach the female quick connect to the brass fuel tap and the circuit's complete. Your switch should now work and turn on the intercooler pump. If you chose to just do a test like this, go ahead and disassemble and run the wires through the fuse box lid to install the switch permanently. To make sure the wires don't get pinched by the fuse box lid, you need to cut a little slot in the fuse box plastic. It's suggested to use some diagonal wire cutters, but when I did that, it broke off a little more plastic than expected. I think I would just use a sharp razor blade in the future if I had to do it again. Here's where I found out I installed the switch in the wrong spot. I was mistaken thinking the lid could go either direction, but it doesn't go this way. So I had to put a new hole in and install the switch. No big deal, I'll either put a nice grommet in this hole or just get a new lid. They're only about $20. But I don't mind showing you my mistakes because once you see me do something wrong, at least you won't do it wrong. In the meantime, to keep the lid sealed, I'm just gonna throw some duct tape over it. We're also done with the positive terminal, so go ahead and put that cover back on. Again, it's a little bit of a tight fit, but you'll get there. Now the next step I think is optional and that is to replace some of the black intercooler hose with clear hose. This helps you see the coolant flowing and look for bubbles. But if you don't wanna do that, you really probably don't have to, it's just recommended. Tap Out suggests cutting off a good portion of your black hose and replacing it with the clear hose provided, but I decided to have a reversible situation and just add a few inches of clear hose to my black hose, and it doesn't really change the setup much, and I can still monitor the coolant flow. For easier access, I suggest removing the front part of your intake system. Super easy, there's just two hose clamps, one here and one over here, Loosen those up and pull the rubber away from the tubing. Of course, this could be a little different on the ATSV and definitely different on the XTSV Sport. Now lift up on the center section and there is a small coolant hose attached to the crossover, at least on the V Sport, and down below the crossover is held in by the pins of this bracket. Underneath the front is a vacuum line. You need to press on one of the gray buttons and release the hose from the connector. Now this gives us plenty of room to get access to this hose for replacement. To prep the clear hose, heat it up with a hair dryer or heat gun. This will help you get the brass fitting in there easier. It's a tight fit. Once you have that installed, you can make a decision on how much hose you want available. This is about how much I had. It's about two or three inches. You just want enough to have a little window of coolant. If not, follow instructions with the tap out kit and cut off some of your black hose and use a longer piece of clear hose. To remove your black hose, use your channel grips or hose clamp pliers, open up the clamp and slide it back off the nipple section. The rubber hose may not come off so easily, so again, use your pliers and gently grip the rubber and give it a small twist to break it free and then it should come right off. I was ready to catch all the coolant that came out, but not much came out. This is sort of a high point in the system, so it's not likely to lose a lot. Next, slide one of the clamps provided with the tap out kit onto your stock hose and add in the brass coupler, the clear hose, and another clamp on top of that. Install the hose clamps and tighten them so they're in a position to easily be unscrewed and they don't touch the other hoses nearby which could rub them and cut them open. Also, you wanna check later that your engine cover doesn't quite rub against those hose clamps either. Next, add the stock clamp back on, slide the clear hose over the nipple of the intercooler and adjust the clamp into the right position. Again, making sure it's not rubbing against anything else. Now it's time to actually do the intercooler bleeding process. Even if you decided not to install the clear hose, this part is what you need to do. Use the funnel and attach the black hose to it, and then put that on the intercooler bleed valve. Be careful, otherwise you'll learn like I did that the valve swivels easily, especially with the top heavy coolant funnel above. So keep it steady, and if you need to, maybe tie a string to it and the hood latch to ensure it doesn't tip over. Now to start the bleed process. Just insert the dowel into the funnel and press down on the valve's center point. This will open it up and bubbles should come out. 
You can assist by turning on the intercooler pump with the switch and letting it run for a few seconds and then turning it off. You may see bubbles come up. I noticed that the first time I ran the pump, there was a lot of gurgling going on before the pump ran smoothly, and this tells me there were quite a few bubbles. It was definitely not as empty as it would be to cause the pump to stop running, but there were definitely bubbles that need to be removed. Not sure if there's an absolute proven way to do this, but I found I really liked to just hold the valve open, turn on the switch for about three seconds, turn it off while holding the valve open, and letting it burp out. I repeated the process many times, and even though it stopped letting out big bubbles, there were times it was letting out lots of little bubbles, kind of like foam. But remember, all those little tiny bubbles do add up to larger bubbles, so even those count. Having the clear hose section was definitely helpful in seeing that the coolant was there and seeing an air pocket located in that spot. In addition to this method, you may be able to get some more air out by cracking open the bleeders with a seven millimeter wrench. These are located on the sides of the inlet. When you crack it open, some air will come out and then it will start leaking out coolant. Close them when they start leaking fluid. Keep working at it. You might spend 15 or 20 minutes. After you think you've gotten most of the bubbles that you can get out, it's time to take the car out for a drive, get it warmed up and come back and do it some more. Be sure to wipe up and rinse away any spilled coolant. Yeah, I made a mess here, but that's because that funnel fell over. It's okay to wash down your engine while it's cool. Go ahead and do that, but don't spray directly in the electrical fuse area. Then afterwards, start your car to start warming up the engine to evaporate a lot of that. Use a towel to assist, and some compressed air will really help get the water out of the crevices. After you've taken the car for a drive, come back and do some more bleeding. You will find there are some more bubbles. I suggest you do this process a few times over a few days even. One of the things I noticed after multiple bleeds is the sound of the pump as it starts up. Initially, there was a lot of gurgling and burbling, and now when I start it up, there's a little less. I would like to get it to the point where it just starts up completely quiet, but after a number of attempts, it's still not quite there. Honestly, the process seems almost endless as bubbles still come up every now and then when I check it, but that's why you wanna do this. Get rid of all those bubbles for maximum horsepower. When you're all done, put the funnel plug in and remove the funnel from the Schrader valve. There will be some spillage. Be sure to wipe it up and rinse it off. Well, that's it for bleeding your intercooling system. It's not too bad, really. I do suggest you go back and bleed it occasionally to ensure that it's operating at its max performance. Now, I'd like to thank Tap Out Tuning for sending out this demo kit and allowing me to bring this video to you. Be sure to check out tapouttuning.com for lots of cool stuff for the LF3 and LF4 motors. And of course, Tap Out Tuning is known for some great tunes on the ATSV. Sorry, at the time of this video, no tunes for the V Sport, but hey, you never know in the future. Either way, the links are in the description. And if you like this video and you think now you will go bleed your system with this kit, be sure to hit the like button. It really helps me out and subscribe, hit the bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks so much for watching the Jeff Fuel Only channel. I'll see you next time. Knowledge, 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 knowledge.